What's up, YouTube? Pink Reaper here. So, um, I wasn't originally intending to uh, upload a video today, or rather, I wasn't intending to record a video today. Uh, mostly because of some things that happened yesterday involving one, having to work obscenely early, and then two, the power going out in pretty much all of Southern California uh, when I would have been going to bed, and instead, power went out, my fan, my cool air, all that stuff went out, so it became ridiculously hot in my house, and then everyone on the street was making so much noise because the power went out and everyone was freaking out. And, uh, it was a bad night, let's just put it like that. So I was just going to play some Pokemon, kind of, uh, kind of just kind of kill some time, uh, maybe go up the ladder a little bit, um, but then this game happened, and it, it inspired me to start this video, so I've had this idea now for some time, um, on sort of a teaching Pokemon, um, set of videos, I think I've mentioned it more than once. Where basically I'd go through the um, the basics of you know building a team, battling things like that, the competitive stuff, stuff that's kind of more intangible. Like it's not things you can really, um, it's not something you can really learn without you know something to help teach you. You, it, it's possible. I mean. Lord knows I did it, but I did it the hard way. I literally just kept battling over and over and over and over again and losing and losing and losing and losing. Um, it, But having guides, having things like that really, really helps because Pokemon is a diff difficult thing to learn. Um, so I had this idea for this series. I was going to call it Pokemon 101. It was going to be like kind of like a class setup. I'd, um, I'd introduce, you know, a new... Um, a new concept to battling, kind of explain it, and hopefully have some battles in the background that I saved from before uh, to kind of show off. And this is kind of, I wouldn't call it an intro to that, but more like a um, proof of concept. Um, and I want to get your guys' input, see if you guys would actually be interested in that. So this was a battle I had just a couple minutes ago. The battle did not actually 100% complete. The, uh, the opponent dipped. Um, after I'd uh, sort of just obliterated him on all sides. Um, but I feel like this will be a good video to help understand one of the more difficult concepts of, um, of Pokemon, and that is predicting. Predicting is very big in competitive battle, um, or at least so they say, uh, but we'll get to that in a whole other video. Um, so let's just start it up real quick and pause it. I definitely don't want to be playing on fast. Let's do normal. Um, so as you can see, I'm up here in the top. I'm the Pink Reaper. I lead with my Metagross. I actually led with the wrong Metagross. This is my actual fourth gen team. There's only one or one or two actual differences between my fourth and fifth gen team. My fourth gen team, Metagross, does not have Bullet Punch, which is unfortunate because I have um, Lumgross specifically for lead Breloom. Um, it Meteor Mashes, and if that doesn't kill it, I can just pick it off with... Um, um, bullet punch, uh, even if I get spored, which is unfortunate. And I also have um, a Babiri Berry on Tyranitar to protect it from bullet punches, though I doubt anything on his team is going to use bullet punch. Um, so at first I actually don't realize that I don't have bullet punch on this, so I just play it like I normally would. I get, I, you know, get put to sleep and I just meteor mash right away. <coughs> right here I notice I don't have bullet punch. Um, that's why I say, oh dear, this is the wrong team. Um, which is unfortunate, but luckily for me, he does switch out. This was the one thing I was not predicting. I was entirely predicting him to, um, to stay in and just spore me again. But I'm thinking he assumed I had bullet punch. Now, this is where, uh, this is where prediction goes wrong, essentially. He, um, or rather, this is where prediction is at its most basic level. He predicted that move, he predicted wrong, obviously, and he switched out. What did he switch out to? He switched out to Ferrothorn. Um, so I throw up a Stealth Rocks. Um, right here I Earthquake, just to see what he's going to do. Now, this is a really important turn, I need, need you guys to understand that. Um, earthquake was for a, just for a few things. I wanted to deal a little bit of damage. I wanted to see if he'd go for um, Thunder Wave or anything like that, because Ferrothorn actually has nothing to fear from Metagross. Um, 
it would make more sense to start with a move like um, Leech Seed or Thunder Wave than it would to just go straight to Stealth Rocks. And Thunder Wave specifically, because Thunder Wave will uh, will just hurt Metagross more. I mean, obviously Metagross isn't a fast Pokemon, but Prowls is a big is a big thing, especially on a Pokemon that were, that um, already sort of. Um, has to use a really low accuracy move like Meteor Mash. Meteor Mash isn't low accuracy, but when you have to, when you're already relying on a low accuracy move, so you've got that sort of that percent of things that can go wrong right away. If you uh, add paralysis on top of it, uh, it really can really damage you at that point. Um, but right here, I'm because he throw up Stealth Rocks right away. I'm pretty certain he's not um, he's not running Thunder Wave. I'm thinking he's probably just running Leech Seed. Um, Leech Seed, Protect, um, and then an attacking move, either Gyro Ball or Power Whip. More than likely, Power Whip. Um, Earthquake is also big for another reason, and I'll explain that a little later. Um, so he throws up Stealth Rocks. Right here, I switch into Breloom, assuming he's going to Leech Seed, and I am correct. He Leech Seeds, Breloom takes nothing. Um, this is a prediction gone right. This is where, this is where, um, I want to stop and talk a minute for, our, about both of our teams. Both of us are playing very linear teams. Um, we do not rely on any gimmicks or anything like that. Our teams, our teams are very, very straightforward. He's got a Politoed to set up rain. He's got a Breloom and a Ferrothorn to, you know, take advantage of that rain and not take the the, uh, the boosted fire damage. Um, it helps with their their weaknesses. He's got a very fast electric Pokemon in Jolteon to throw out Stab Thunders. He's got Gyarados and Starmie to take advantage of that um, that rain and throw out more powerful water attacks. He does have a big electric weakness, obviously, with three three water Pokemon, but he's also got <coughs> two grass Pokemon to, to resist it and an absorber. Um, Starmie is more than likely an offensive spinner with something like Thunder, Rapid Spin, um, Surf, or Hydro Pump, um, and then Ice Beam or possibly Recover if it's using a Life Orb. Uh, Gyarados could be one of many things, but it's a very linear team. My team is the same way. I've got my basic lead in Metagross, uh, and then I've basically just got six or five sweepers. I've got a lead in five sweepers. Uh, my team does not support itself very well, um, so I say. That's only partially true, but from the outside looking in, uh, it's a, it's a very simple team. I just sort of hit hard and then hope I can pick things off faster than I can get picked off. Um, linear teams are... On the surface, they seem easy. Um, but it's really not. Because when you have a linear team, your moves are obvious, usually really obvious. Um, that's where this starts happening. Um, I know he's not going to stay in. I know he's going to switch. So I don't actually spore here, I just go for the substitute, and he goes into a Breloom. Now for for a second here, and this is the first this is the, the only real misprediction I make for the rest of the game. Um, I wasn't certain what type of Breloom this was. I almost thought it could be Choice Band or Choice Scarf. Both are ridiculous sets, but um, I've seen them enough to at least worry about them. Um, a I assumed, however, it was max speed, and I'm not. I'm just under max speed, so I figured it'll be faster than me. Um, I'm thinking it's going to go for Bullet Seed. Bullet Seed is what I expected to break my sub and at least deal some damage before it like dies or gets um, or gets put to sleep. Um, it, however, is not. It is a Life Orb um, Breloom, and it uses that Mach Punch, destroys my sub, and then my Spore misses. This is the only real misprediction I make here. Um, so he switches into Jolteon. Jolteon is faster. But <coughs> here's here's where he makes a mistake. Or rather, here's the mistake he keeps making. He's going to go for the obvious play. This Jolteon, in my mind, must have um, Thunderbolt, or rather Thunder, since he's using Rain, um, Hidden Power Ice, Shadow Ball, and probably something like Baton Pass or something stupid like that. Um, there's no way he would switch in on me if he didn't have HP Ice. Um, so it's really obvious that's the move to go for. Now, he should have realized that I would switch, 
and gone for something else, but he went for the baseline prediction. Or, he didn't even go for a prediction, he went for the, the, the easiest move. And it's an obviously predicted move. So I switch out, and I go into Metagross. Uh, Metagross obviously is going to take absolutely no damage from HP Ice. Um, and now this is where Earthquake becomes a big thing. Uh, he saw me use Earthquake earlier, so he knows I have Earthquake. He knows I can hit Jolteon super effectively. Um, so this is where the mistake of bringing this team in actually helped me significantly. So, <laughs> he expects me to Earthquake. And again, he makes the really obvious move here. He thinks I'm going to Earthquake, so he wants to go to a Pokemon that resists, or in, or in his case, is immune to Earthquake. He's going to go to Gyarados. I knew this from the start. So what do I do? I don't Earthquake. I explode. Uh, explosion just outright KOs Gyarados. Um, so now he's down a Gyarados, basically. Just completely down a Pokemon. He had nothing to do, do there. And this is this is actually going this next turn is going to be the l the last turn of the game. And it's really obvious why. Now, the big thing that's happened here is now we have to double switch, basically. I'm down a Pokemon, he's down a Pokemon. Um, I just wanted to get Gyarados off the screen. Um, we both have to bring something in. Um, and I'm predicting, you know, he's gotten nothing going well for him right now. But he's got a free switch in, and he obviously wants to have Rain up. So he's not going to go for anything like Ferrothorn um, for fear of me... For fear of me of putting out many of the Pokemon on my team that can just destroy Ferrothorn. Um, he's gonna go to Politoed. I know this. Um, because he's been making all the obvious plays. And he's and one of the obvious things is he wants Rain on his team. And what does he what does he do? Unsurprisingly, he goes to Politoed. Um, I chose Breloom, knowing sort of as a risk, but not really. I was assuming he wasn't running Choice Scarf Politoed. Um, it just seemed with the way his team team was built, he probably wasn't running Choice Scarf Politoed. And as such, I expected my Breloom to be able to outspeed it, which my Breloom does if it's not Choice Scarfed. Um, at this point, he's basically lost. Because he cannot do anything to this Breloom with that Politoed. He has to get Spored, so he has to sacrifice him to Spore. But then after that, I can basically one-hit KO his whole team. Um, all I really have to do is predict what he brings in. Um, and because of that, he'll literally just be down two, two Pokemon. I can, um, I can Spore it, substitute whatever the switch is, and then instantly KO whatever he brings in. Um, and at best, he'll be able to take down my substitute. Um, and... Uh, assuming his his Ferrothorn doesn't have Gyro Ball, he wouldn't even be able to bring that in to break my substitute. He'd have to sacrifice Jolteon or Starmie. And if he sacrifices Jolteon, his whole team basically just loses to my, uh, um, to my Zapdos. However, if he sacrifices Starmie, his whole team basically just loses to, uh, to my, my, um, my Tyranitar. Although he probably didn't, ex wouldn't expect that, because he wouldn't expect the, um, the Fire Punch to, to one-hit KO his Ferrothorn, but it's true, that's what would happen. Um, keep in mind, his Ferrothorn is not at full health at this point. It's at, like, yeah, 76%. Um, and I could one-hit KO that with just a Fire Punch raw. I would not need to, um, to Dragon Dance. Um, so, literally right there, he just forfeits, which doesn't surprise me at all, because at that point, he's lost. Um... So, the big thing here is, he was making the simple plays. He was either predicting on the most baseline level, or he just wasn't predicting at all. Um, which is where we get back to the linear teams. You can't play a linear team like that, at least not in higher levels. Uh, if your team is very linear, and you make the obvious plays, your opponent is just going to see them coming. You might get lucky early, when they, they expect you to predict, but if, you're, if you don't predict at all... They're just going to keep assume. They're just going to assume you're going to make the uh, the obvious play and take that as a free turn. And a, a linear team cannot give up a free turn. Once you've given up a free turn, you basically have lost all momentum you have. Um, that's 
that's what this was right here. Um, he made the obvious plays, he lost a Gyarados, and it got me my Breloom in against his Politoed, which would have given me a free turn, um, and crippled one Pokemon and destroyed another. His team could not function at that point. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's why you need prediction um, when you're playing at higher levels. You need to you need to be understanding what your your opponent's mindset was. Most of his plays to me were really obvious, um, and I understood his mindset that he wanted to have that rain in. He wanted Politoed in. He finally got a free switch in on it, but the problem is it wasn't free for him. He should have seen it coming. His smart move should have would have been to send in his fastest Pokemon. Um, if he had sent in something like Jolteon, uh, it could have, at the very least, threatened some of the Pokemon I'm running. It would have been able to do well against Infernape, against Breloom, and against Zapdos, because Zapdos can't really deal with it. Uh, or alternatively, he could have sent in Starmie. Uh, Starmie threatens everything on my team, with the exception of Tyranitar. Um... And technically Zapdos, but he wouldn't know... He he at no, no point found out that I had Choice Scarf. Um, but he played that... He played with that simple mindset that was easy to read and easy to understand. Instead of making, you know, the most optimal play there, he decided... Um, he decided to go with what he had been wanting since the beginning. That's not always the best way to play. Uh, but this is sort of the idea of what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to make a, I want to make videos that really help sort of explain the, the, the in-depth theories, really, of, of, uh, competitive Pokemon. Um, and really I just want to help other, help you guys sort of understand competitive Pokemon, because it is a difficult thing to learn, and I'd love for more people to learn, and I'd love more people to play. Um, specifically 4th Gen, there's a 4th Gen ladder on Pokemon Showdown, if you guys want to, you know, just join that and play that, that'd be great. Just saying. Um, but tell me guys, tell me what you guys think. Um, tell me if you like it, tell me if you don't. Um, if you don't, I will never do it again, I guess. I'll just keep playing on my off time. Um, but if you do, I'll, I'll start doing, start doing more of this, I'll start doing more in-depth stuff. Um, I didn't actually mean to start out with something this, um, this complex, like the idea of predicting with the first video. It just sort of happened. Um, and I would more than likely redo, or not redo this, but do a full, more full video on prediction um, at a later date if we really do this. Um, but thanks for watching, guys. This has been Pink Reaper signing out.